G'day guys, we've got an algebraic expression today that we're trying to solve. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use index laws to solve this particular algebraic expression. I could use logs, but I know a lot of you guys don't like logs. So I'm just going to, you know, go with the tried and true, you know, indices to solve this one. So how am I going to start by solving this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this front part here. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and turn this front part into something in terms of 3 to the power of t. Now you'll see why in a second, but to start with I'm going to try and make this look like this. So let's get to it. We're going to use a lot of the, the first index law that a lot of you guys will be exposed to is this multiplicative law where we have a to the n times by a to the m is equal to a to the n plus m. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this law but backwards to um, reduce this into its sort of factors, so to speak. So I'm going to go, well, this thing is going to be equal to 3 to the power of 2t times by 3 to the power of 1. I can keep that in a bracket if you like. And I'm just going to minus 8 times 3t minus 3 equals 0. So a lot of the index laws we're going to use today, we're going to use them in reverse. So it's important to know them quite well. So what are we going to do next? Well, to get this to look more like this, I'm going to use um, like the index law we use when we have brackets, a to the m all to the n, or a to the n all to the m, is equal to a to the n times m. So here we have 3 to the power of t times 2. So we are going to change that to, we'll start with our outside bracket, then we have an inside bracket with a 3t inside it, all to the power of 2 times by 3 to the power of 1, let's just leave it as 3, minus 8 times 3 to the power of t, minus 3 equals 0. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we've got to where we uh, wanted to get to. Now, to make this a lot more easy to see, I'm just going to rearrange this front bit to this. We're going to go 3 times 3 to the power of t squared minus 8, 3 to the power of t minus 3 equals 0. Now, this is the, um, the cool part or, you know, the um, bit of intuition or the step that a lot of people will get stuck with. They'll get to here and go, well, what the hell do I do now? Now, the way we're going to solve this is using um, like a quadratic factorization. So the way we have to get it to a quadratic is we're going to do a substitution. So I'm going to say, let a be equal to 3 to the power of t. Some people say u, some people say x, some people say uh, y, it's all sorts. But it's all the same. We're going to use a substitution for our number to the power of the coefficient. Oh, sorry, to the power of the unknown. So once I do that, I'm left with 3a squared minus 8a minus 3. Now from here, you can see that we've got just a simple non-monic quadratic expression which basically just needs to be factorized. So I'm going to assume that you guys know how to factorize these. So I'm just going to go straight ahead and factorize it. Well, we're going to be left with, we're going to split this up into 3a squared minus 9a plus a minus 3 equals 0. I'm then going to carry this over. Let's just separate that off. I'm then going to carry this over to up here where I'm going to factorize the front by 3a 
and the back by one. And I'm left with that's equal to zero. Now, if this is not making any sense to you, you need to go back and have a look at some um, videos or refresh your knowledge on how to factorize quadratic expressions. But we've got to here. Now, what we're going to use from here is we're going to use the null factor law, NFL, that's not National Football League, that's null factor law. Just don't get confused. There's nothing to do with football in this question. So, we can from here we can say that a is equal to negative 1 over 3, or a is equal to 3. So from here, this is where the intuition comes from. We've got therefore, we bring back the 3t. 3t equals negative 1 over 3. Now, there is no t that exists where 3 to the power of it is going to be negative 1 over 3. So you can say for this one, a solution does not exist. And then for the next one, we're going to have 3 to the power of t equals 3. So from here, we can say that t is obviously going to equal 1. Cool. So we might have had two solutions, but because the fact that we have a negative answer here, we can't have 3 to the power of a positive 3 to the power of a number and get a negative fraction. It just doesn't work like that. But in the second uh, situation where we had a equal to 3, we're able to get t is equal to 1. So just a quick recap, guys. What I did is I used my indices. The indices knowledge came in. This bit here came in so we could rearrange our original function so we can get the uh, 3t by itself in both the... Uh, like the a squared and the a's in the singular terms. Once we've done that, we can then, we do this like substitution here. And once we've done that substitution, it's all about factorization. For the, you, you guys watching this in America, that's the correct way to spell it. Now, once we've done the factorization, we can use the null factor law to then um, show how, like, which, what the um, two solutions could possibly be. But because you have to use common sense here, this we can't get a solution from, and we found that we could get another one from, we could get a solution from the other one. So, you know, quite a quick video today, guys. Um, you know, I hoped it helped with a bit of understanding on this particular uh, question like there is a few nuances to it in terms of the substitution and the factorization but I'm sure if you practice a couple of them you know you'll have no problem solving these in the future so if it helped guys you know make sure you do subscribe to my channel and give this video a like it does help me out um, attracting new people to my channel but until next time I'll keep putting videos out and hopefully you guys will keep watching them but definitely like always enjoy your maths